hey guys welcome back to my channel it is sunday morning which is why i'm in my pajamas with no makeup on and i look crazy but i am going to show you guys today how i make bread so i really like to make bread i just really like to bake in general and um, it's just something that i really enjoy and i like to do it because bread at the store can be full of all sorts of stuff like preservatives and chemicals that is not good for your body and so i like to make my bread at home because I know exactly what's in it and honestly it's just really fun and it's very satisfying to know that you made something and that it tastes delicious and so yeah that's why I make bread and I'm gonna show you guys how I make bread um, the recipe that I'm using today is from the joy of cooking this is an amazing cookbook if you guys haven't heard of it before or don't have one there's a recipe for pretty much anything you can ever want in here so I would definitely recommend checking this book out even if you just check it out from your library and like photocopy a few recipes it's a solid one. So this, I'm using the recipe for rustic French bread in this book. It's super easy. It just takes a little while, which is why we're starting now at 9.30 a.m. And we'll probably be done by like 8 p.m. But I really enjoy it. So let's get started. Okay, so for this bread we're making today, you need to start by making a sponge starter. And a sponge starter is basically just a, it's a mix of yeast and water that ferments before you mix it all together so it makes your bread really light and fluffy and delicious. So we're going to start with a medium sized bowl and then you need half a cup of lukewarm water. So I just ran this for my sink until it got pretty warm. The recipe says between 80 and 90 degrees but I'm just kind of guesstimating. The only thing is you don't want your water to be too hot or it will kill your yeast. And then I'm going to take um, half a teaspoon of yeast. I use the Fleischmann's Active Dry just like it's cheap at the grocery store and pour that in the water and just let it spread and dissolve and you're gonna let it sit for about five minutes until it is all, all the way dissolved and starting to get a little foamy. All right, now that our yeast has kind of dissolved and started to bloom a little bit, we're gonna take three quarter cups of bread flour I just use the bread flour from my local grocery store, but um, King Arthur flour is great. And you want to use bread flour because it has a higher protein content, and so it makes stronger gluten. And it will make your bread stronger and more bready, I guess. So we're going to dump three quarters of, of qu three quarter of a cup of bread flour in here and then mix it up until it starts to get stringy and pull away from the sides of the bowl. So as you can see, as I'm mixing it, it gets kind of elastic and starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. That's when you know it's about ready. So I'm just gonna wipe off all my extra starter off my spoon here. And then it just needs to rest and rise. And this rises for about six hours at room temperature or 14 hours in the fridge. So if you are, um, like you could do it overnight if you needed to if you wanted to rest it in the fridge and but if not it's I've got plenty of time I'm just gonna rest it in room temperature until it's about um, doubled in size uh, actually tripled in size and it's kind of bubbly um, and then you'll be ready to move on to the next step so I'm just gonna cover this with some plastic wrap set it aside and let it rise Okay, just a quick update. It's been about three hours and two hours, two hours. And you can see how it's starting to grow and bubble and there's condensation on this plastic wrap. So that's how you know that the yeast is working and the starter is growing and it's going well. I just thought I'd show you in the middle of the process because sometimes you can get halfway through and be like, I don't know, this is how it's supposed to look. So this is what it looks like about two hours in. All right, progress update number two. It's been now about three and a half hours-ish. And as you can see, as you can see, it has expanded a ton. It's a lot more bubbly. It's very full. The con there's still condensation on the plastic wrap here, but it's grown a ton, very bubbly. So all good progress. 
it's got about two and a half hours more to go honestly i'm gonna leave it for longer than that just because i'm going to church for a few hours but when i come back we'll be all ready to mix it up and i'll show you what it looks like right before i um, move on to the next step so i'm gonna take the paper the plastic off you can see all the bubbles and it's very smells very yeasty so it's ready to go okay so in the bowl of a stand mixer goes your starter so just scoop it all in there it's very stringy at this point kind of gross then you got four and a half cups of bread flour if you don't have bread flour you can use all purpose but bread flour is obviously ideal for making bread and then you need a full teaspoon of salt this or a tablespoon of salt this is important or else your bread won't taste good this happened to me last time I didn't put enough salt and it was kind of bland uh, you want to put your dough hook on and then you'll just mix it you want to mix it until the dough kind of cleans the sides of the bowls oh, I forgot this step very important you also need two cups of room temperature water so either just like warm it up in your sink a little bit until it's warm or let's, before you start mixing like 20 minutes before just sit it out on the counter so it can come to room temperature now our dough will actually become dough Okay, my dough is really wet, so I added some more flour to it. I'll try to mix it some more. There we go. That's much better. Alright, so at this point I'm gonna turn it up a little bit higher and just mix it until it starts to clear off all the sides of the bowl and makes like a slapping noise when it mixes around so okay so this is what it looks like after you've kneaded it for a while it's a really wet dough so don't let that scare you just got to put it into a well-oiled bowl here and let it rise for another two or three hours until it's like doubled in volume. All right, got my flour work surface and my risen dough. It is very risen and it's very jiggly. So I'm gonna plop it out of the bowl onto this flour work surface. And it looks kind of crazy. The bowl looks kind of creepy. And then I'm gonna shape my loaves. So. It's still really wet. Don't let that scare you. I have a bench scraper and I'm just going to divide it in half. It's very sticky also, so just flour your hands up really good. It's totally normal, I promise. I've made this same recipe before and the exact same thing happened, so don't like be nervous about the stickiness of it. And then just make sure you're good and floured and divide that in half. And I'm going to make one large loaf, one large round loaf, and two baguettes. So it's sticky, but it doesn't really stick to your hands terribly. I like to bake on Silpat, which is just silicone mats. Um, so I'm going to scoop, just kind of wrangle this guy into a smaller ball. So I can slide my, my uh, tray on here. It's very sticky and it's kind of disconcerting because I've never ever baked with a dough this wet before but it turns out great I promise so I'm just gonna wrangle this guy up into a circular shape and just honestly like plop it on this sill pat here and shape it into a loaf and it's gonna spread and it's gonna be kind of flat but it's okay it will rise in the oven I promise it doesn't have to be pretty like it's a rustic loaf and so if it's a weird shape that's totally normal this is looking pretty good, honestly, for my taste. So this is what I've got for my round loaf. Just a plop. It looks like one of those, what are those like weird fish that just blobfish. It looks like a blobfish. And, but I'm just gonna shape it a little bit with my um, bench scraper until it's like a nice round shape that I like. And then I'm gonna set it aside to rise yet again. These have to rise like a million trillion times and it's annoying. But I'm going to set this aside to do another proof. 
and I'm going to do attempt to roll the rest of this into some baguette shapes. I mean, they're not French bakery quality, but they will taste delicious. So now that those are shaped, like I said, I'm gonna set them aside to proof. The recipe says between two and four hours. For me, it's like just until they've gotten larger, and then I will come back and we will do the actual bake. Woo! All right, guys, sorry for the, sorry for the background noise. My dishwasher is running, but um, these have finished their final proof and they've spread a lot, so I'm just reshaping them to be a smidgen more like normally shaped because they spread again so I'm just gonna reshape them one more time into like normal shaped loaves all right that's better these bench scrapers I'm telling you you can't do without them they are amazing okay so now that I've folded that into like a more manageable sized loaf I need to score them so you're going to want to grab a paring knife and if you don't know what a paring knife then it's, it's just like a shorter knife and I'm going to score this all the way around. It may not work. It did, last time I did this it didn't score super well just because of the way the dough is. But I'm going to score it in like a half moon shape all the way around. This is just to help the dough maintain its shape as it grows and then for baguettes you kind of want to score them in diagonals all the way down. And then my oven finishes preheating I'm gonna actually boil some water so I'm just gonna put water in my electric kettle and boil it we're gonna put that in the bottom of the oven to create steam which is what creates the super nice crust um, on the edge or on the outside of the loaf all right I'm just boiling some water here in my electric kettle that I'm gonna put in this pan and then throw in the bottom of the oven I have preheated said oven to 450 degrees ready to go I'm gonna dump it in here. That's good, and then I'm just gonna put my oven mitts on quick. Throw that in the bottom of my oven to create some steam. I'm gonna take this tray and set it upside down in my oven so that both of my um, pans can be on the same level so they'll bake evenly. All right, so I'm opening up the oven. Oh, toasty. Setting this back here on the edge. Loaf number one. number two and three. They need to cook for about 30 to 40 minutes and then they'll be done. All right guys, it's been about 30 minutes and whew, the bread is done. So a good way to tell that your bread is done is just to like uh, pick up a loaf and tap on the bottom and if it sounds hollow, then it's probably done. So I'm just gonna look at that. Look at that gorgeous crust. Woo! All right. I'm just gonna pull these out, let them cool, and my bread is done. Thank you guys. How gorgeous. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Nice crusty French loaf. Ooh, I don't know why it lifted like that. It's kind of funky. Maybe it's the way that I like had flipped them over, but I'm really happy with the way my loaves turned out. I'm just gonna slide them off their baking sheets and let them cool right on the wood. I'm gonna sit my loaves um, on this cooling rack because I don't want the I don't want the bottoms to get soggy. If you've ever watched The Great British Bake Off, you know the plight of a soggy bottom. So I'm just gonna let them cool on this cooling rack, and they'll be fresh and ready for me in the morning. I just love this recipe because it makes an awesome crust on your bread, and they're just very interesting. They're not like uniform loaves. They're fun loaves and they're just so delicious. So thank you guys so much for watching and if you'd like to see me do another baking video give this one a thumbs up and leave me a comment about what you'd like to see me bake and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!